In other news, Israel is trying to block a Palestinian move to seek recognition of statehood at the U.N. General Assembly in September. Israel's foreign minister has ordered its ambassadors to fuel the media hype against Palestinian statehood. Meanwhile, Israeli Premier Benjamin Netanyahu and nine of his ministers have left for Italy. Their main goal is expected to be getting world leaders to oppose Palestinian statehood and a U.N. membership. Italy, Germany and the United States have already voiced their opposition to the plan. The U.S. has said that it will veto any U.N. vote on the recognition of Palestinian statehood. Palestinians seek U.N. recognition of an independent state made up of the occupied West Bank, Gaza and East Jerusalem, al -Ghotz. For more on the story, we're joined by Eugene Michael Jones through Skype, who's the editor of Culture Wars magazine from Indiana. Uh, Mr. Jones, thank you for joining us on World News. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is to meet with Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi to focus on Israel's efforts to get world leaders to reject Palestine's plan to seek a UN recognition and membership in September. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Meet, meeting with him uh, soon, yes, that's right. Okay, let me ask you this. Why won't Netanyahu, and pretty much a simple, let the Palestinians back on their own land that they were forced out of? Well, he's trying to, he's trying to get uh, back in front, uh, in charge again, of the situation in, in Palestine, which changed after all of the revolutions uh, in the Middle East. The biggest change was, of course, the uh, Hamas Fatah unity government. Now, there are all these variables that are happening right now. Now there's uh, a snag in the unity government. Apparently, uh, Hamas has rejected uh, Fatah's uh, uh, suggestion for prime minister. That's going to weaken the Palestinian case. So he's trying to get support uh, to defeat uh, that unity government and uh, statehood in the fall. It's all going to depend on all of these variables that are all taking place uh, right now. Berlusconi is not a, a, a popular leader in Italy. Uh, he is in the same situation that the United States Congress is in, except I think he's more vulnerable because the Italian people are less happy with uh, his government and his connection with Israel. There are all of these governments that, uh, in Europe that are facing popular rejection if they don't go along uh, with uh, what looks like a solution to the Palestinian-Israeli uh, problem. So Netanyahu can put pressure on the leaders, but then the leaders have to answer to their own people. And I think there's, there's weakness there right now. This is the, the gist of what the retiring Secretary of Defense Gates said. He said these people are not supporting the attack on Libya. I think that's an indication of the weakness that, that uh, NATO has at this moment, and that's why Netanyahu is trying to get the leaders on board beforehand. Well, Dr. Jones, how is uh, Netanyahu going to be able to get the U.N. Um, to get the recognition, prevent the recognition for Palestine? Uh, bribery. This is, the, this is the way Jewish leaders have always worked in the past. They bribe uh, the prince. They bribe the leaders. And so what you saw in America, after uh, uh, President Obama gave his speech about 67 borders, Netanyahu was there a day later. Uh, on that uh, next day, he addressed the Congress of the United States of America. And during that address, there were people sta situated throughout the Congress who were going to jump up and give a standing ovation whenever he said, at certain points during his speech, IPAC, the uh, Israel lobby in America, informed the congressman that if they were not enthusiastic in their support of Benjamin Netanyahu's speech, that they would get no campaign contributions. That's known as bribery. Okay, you bribe the official. But if the people recognize this, then they vote the people out. So that's, that's, the, that's the dynamic that's going uh, on. Same thing across Europe and in America. It's the same dynamic. They use bribery to get the leaders, but then the leaders lose their credibility when they realize they're being bribed, and so the people vote them out. Well, Dr. Jones, thank you for sharing your thoughts. Um, that was Dr. Eugene Michael Jones joining us through Skype, who's editor of Culture Wars Maggie's in, in Indiana.
There's growing anti-Israeli feeling in Europe with calls on EU and U.S. governments to stop ignoring the occupation of Palestinian land. And though politicians remain silent, activists rally to draw attention to the plight of the Palestinian people. Daniel Bushel has more from Brussels. A day of rage against Israel. Thousands call for the boycott of Israeli goods over its continued expansion on Palestinian land. A Jewish demonstrator says enough is enough. American leaders do nothing. The EU does nothing. The repeated UN resolutions have ruled Israeli settlements illegal. Activists want the European Union to bar the main exports of the occupied territories, flowers and fruit. They formed human barricades at EU supply depots, stopping goods getting through. Israel's Carmel brand market settlement produce and pockets the profit, but occupying forces who are moving their citizens are committing war crimes under the Geneva Convention. Public pressure is bearing fruit. Italy's biggest grocer co-ops banned food grown in the occupied territories. The world's largest security firm, G4S, has stopped work with Israeli checkpoints on the West Bank, admitting it breached human rights. Shareholders forced Belgium's Dexia Bank to sell its Israel arm, over million euro loans to settlements. Activists' next target is the firm laying rail links between settlements and Jerusalem, EU transport giant Veolia. Protesters are also seeking to file charges under international law against Israel over its construction of settlements, which the authorities are investigating. Belgian police will pass these complaints on to the courts. Judges must rule if firms who buy food from occupied Palestinian land are complicit in war crimes. Irish MEP Paul Murphy will join Gaza Flotilla, the biggest yet, to raise awareness of the situation. Nine activists were killed by Israeli commandos when a similar operation was stopped in international waters last year. Murphy feels things have got so bad, he's ready to risk his life. Hopefully people aren't killed this time as they were last time by the Israeli uh, military forces. Um, but that it brings the world's attention to this issue. Such moves, say experts, force politicians and business to act. The public opinion changed their mind. Before they were thinking that Israel was aggressed by the Palestinians, today public opinion have a real capacity to challenge and the international institution, the European institution and the UN and also the big company. The last time such a campaign was mobilised internationally was against the South African apartheid regime. Israel may have powerful allies, but opposition in Europe to its policies is growing too. Daniel Bushel, RT, Brussels. Thank you so much. Thank you.